good morning good afternoon good evening to all the participants who are joining us from different time zones this is mohammad kashif and i welcome all the participants for sparing time in our 18th session on power excel for business and finance professionals thank you for joining and uh, let's move forward uh, with the session um, a little bit about myself um, as i have said um, um, I am a finance expert and also works in a BI environment. Uh, I'm a member of ICMAP since 2005. Uh, have over 21 years of experience uh, in literally all departments of finance, um, whether it is capacity building, uh, uh, financial modeling, financial analysis, financial reporting. I'm also founder uh, and uh, managing partner of Kaiser Analytics LLP, and we work on emerging technologies in uh, in, in different uh, areas which are touched with tools like uh, BI, R, uh, Python, blockchain, IoTs, etc. Uh, we work in two areas, um, in capacity building uh, for finance and business professionals, and also in project implementation, uh, to result in data-driven decision making. So that's, I think, uh, all about ourselves. Let's move forward uh, with the topics which we have. Um, the topics which we will discuss uh, today are divided in four areas. So the uh, first one is about big pictures uh, for business and finance professional. Uh, then we will go and we will have uh, an introduction of Power Excel tools like uh, Power Query and uh, uh, Power Pivot. Then we will move forward and uh, we will have the practical session on uh, Power Excel and, and the link to the uh, exercise file is given uh, below in the description. So you can download the file and you can work along. Uh, definitely we will not pause so once we are uh, going through with the uh, practical session so you can always this recording will be there on the youtube channel so you can always uh, uh, download the uh, the exercise file and you can work along with us uh, and and see the magic happens uh, last but not the least we have some important takeaways so first uh, big picture regarding business and finance professionals um we will we will try to um give you a glimpse of the enhanced roles um uh, the skills which are needed uh traditional business reports and then the improved business reports uh, there are there are quite a number of things which we need to discuss uh in this uh, area there are quite a, quite a lot which is happening uh, around us chat gpt is there ai tool is there um, which is just changing, uh, uh, which has taken the world by storm. But uh, it's important to have the fundamentals correct and right so that you can move forward. So you cannot, uh, you can jump to uh, next two, three steps, but it's it's important to have these two, three, two steps and have the foundation correctly. So that is the important thing which we need to uh, cater in this uh, this webinar. Okay, so uh, first enhanced role of business profession. So it's if you are working in, um, in any area, operations, finance, HR, sales, uh, logistics, procurement. So all these areas uh, you are working uh, in a way that you are you are using excel and and you are working in a reporting uh, manner then you, you then you uh, move up the ladder and you you tend to be in a decision making role so this is one of the examples which i have taken from fp a friends website um, it's it's a, a a good article which is written by mr harish uh, maheshwari so if you see, it's an evolution of um, a finance business partnership, but you can also uh, name it as uh, as as an overall working. You can uh, also make an understanding for business uh, uh, business um, partnerships or uh, business professionals, which are either HR, um, which can be sales, and which can be in other leagues as well. So the important thing is to understand. At y-axis, they have plotted uh, business value, and at x-axis, they have plotted uh, mindset and skill set. So, the first area 
uh, which we all encounter once we are new to the job is uh, the reporting area. You tend to report um, uh, certain certain things uh, regularly. Uh, it can be any KPIs. It can be a standard uh, report, internal focus, anything else. It's, it can be on cost, revenue, or, or any other areas um, for HRs, for sales, for HRs. It can be human retention, uh, employee uh, attendance, or anything else. But you tend to report uh, certain areas. So your mindset is, is like a, a reporter in, in that area. Then once you move up, as far as business value is concerned and you move forward as far as the mindsets and skill sets are concerned, then the report is presented to some controllers. So you move up the ladder for the controller prospect. So at a controller area, you uh, tend to be a, a person who is uh, there to help the decision maker in making decision. Uh, and, and you also have your own problems uh, solving skills. There can be rolling forecasts, historical analysis, and other things which you uh, want to present. Now, this area, which is an analyzer area, is uh, more about uh, the collaboration between different persons. So you, you need to work with different stakeholders and, and you work, uh, so, you, so you need uh, some more skills apart from uh, the area, uh, the specific technical area. Uh, the other skills are communication. Uh, you need to work with people. So people skills are there. Collaboration is there. And definitely your own technical skills are also needed. Then there are the analyzers tend to move up to influencer where you want to build good relationship. Uh, you want to a, uh, assist the decision maker in taking decisions and finally you are in a position where you are taking decisions uh, you are doing uh, workings uh, so you have you should have uh, a business acumen a scenario analysis execution so you want to uh, develop a plan and you want to execute that plan and then you want to see whether that plan has reached to a certain area here I uh, want to emphasize on some important areas, which is uh, this webinar is, is focused on the professionals who are stuck at either a reporter area or a controller area, okay? Uh, because uh, this, the skill sets which we will discuss moving forward in this webinar is uh, is more or less which is required by reporter and control areas. Uh, there are different skill sets which are required by analyzer, influencer, and uh, strategic partner. So uh, we will uh, we will touch on that one uh, a little bit. Uh, what are the skill sets which are needed? But let's once we have moved moving forward, I'll make this clear. And for those professionals who are watching this webinar, uh, they. Uh, they should be clear uh, what they are getting uh, moving forward with this webinar. So uh, it is much more focused, which I have already explained, to reporter and controller. So who, those who are stuck at controller and reporting area. And why I'm saying it? Because um, if you want to move forward, uh, every person in the world has 24 hours. So uh, you cannot by time. So you will have to work around in order to utilize time effectively. So you have 24 hours, so you want to do more in less time. And this is what uh, is needed to the professionals who are stuck at reporter and control area. So this is the, the area which we are uh, touching in the webinar. And um, uh, that's that's an important area. So if we want to move forward, so we'll we'll have a touch on that one. Um, the uh, if if we want to uh, go for the skill sets and mindsets which are needed. So starting from the business partnering influencer, there are um, there are certain other things which you need to understand. So the first and foremost thing, uh, once if you are in a reporting and controlling areas, so uh, you will uh, um, you will agree with me that there are certain uh, 
uh, reports which are regular in nature so they can be they are regular in on monthly basis they may be uh, regular in on quarterly basis on fortnightly 15 days basis so mostly on monthly basis or or weekly basis it's it's definitely up to the organization uh so those regular reports those standard and routine reports needs to be uh, automated uh, there can be certain reports which uh, which may not be automated completely the routine reports but maximum uh, reports can be automated and that's what that's what we are covering in the session and that's what it needed uh, the skill set which is required uh, to do this kind of task of automation uh, is more about um, the data wrangling skill. So you want to transform data, you want to make data clean for your reporting. So before uh, you receive a data, so there are certain transformation which you work and definitely we will do certain, some transformation in our session today as well. Uh, then moving forward, um, you will go for data analysis, data visualization, dashboard design. And if you want to go further and uh, uh, be noticed by the management, so you will have to add some storytelling element in, in um, your dashboard as well. Um, the things which we are not covered, but we are discussing is uh, there may be uh, certain ad hoc reports that can be uh, requested by the management um, uh, based on their their requirement. So for those uh, working and for the areas like influencer and and uh, a business partnering uh, element, so you need a, a different type of skill sets, uh, communication, uh, leadership, people management. People management is, is kind of an amazing skill. If you have that one, it's it's amazing skill. Problem solving, um, definitely business acumen, strategic thinking and storytelling uh, over there as well. But here the storytelling element is uh, all about connecting dots. So if you are presenting some area and you want your, your audience to reach at a point where you want them to, to reach and to clear your point so you will you will build your case in a in a gradual manner so that is different than the storytelling which we have uh, written below uh, that storytelling is more about doing the uh, visualization and all those things so preparing the same and delivering the same uh, these are two things okay uh, so standards or ad hoc reports, there are uh, different reports, but uh, for standards or for ad hoc reports, uh, different type of uh, professionals needs to do or uh, uh, do the reporting, uh, which are of different kind. For instance, for finance professionals, I have just written few of the reports, which are over here. Uh, uh, three uh, three logical statements, financial statements, which we uh, which they make, agings, uh, then overall sales report, uh, then expense and and budget variance analysis, inventory KPIs. Um, if if you want to go deep as far as sales are concerned, so sales professionals tends to make uh, quite a number of reports. That now they have their own areas. Uh, Apart from performance of the different uh, territories, salesperson or sales manager, they they want to have their pipeline report, customer acquisition, retention, sale forecast, conversion. Then there are other reports as well, uh, which they make. And, and I think uh, I have not included the long list. So it's a, it's a kind of a short list, which I have included. Uh, so I've taken three areas of uh, finance, sales, and human resource, and there are other areas as well, logistics operations. So I've just taken three areas just to show you that there are a certain type of uh, standard reports. Few of them can be ad hoc, but most of them are standard reports, which are regularly prepared by most of the organizations. Employee um, attendance, turnover, training, recruitment, performance appraisal. So there are different uh, kind of reports which uh, they make. So these are few of the examples um, regarding the ad hoc and the standard reports. And the reason why uh, we are having this webinar and um, um, we and I am building this case uh, is because of um, some of the 
um uh, some of the online polls which i have uh, uh, conducted uh, i have conducted uh, polls i think two years back then recently i have also conducted the same poll and i have also uh, been talking to uh, business professionals especially uh, most of them are finance and uh, a, a good number of them are sales professional as well so more or less the results from the poll is kind of the same as uh, talking uh, to those professionals um so the first thing which uh, this is this is a, uh, this is a um uh, area which uh, i am really keen to uh, indicate uh, so before going to the poll i just want to uh, elaborate how the standard uh, or standard reports are made uh, so in an analysis uh, a process um, they tend to extract the data then they uh, that's an important thing they will clean the data uh, analyze it and do the reporting so they will create some fancy dashboards out of it mostly and most of the professionals tend to use uh, pivot table and pivot charts to create uh, those dashboards and they are, are doing some amazing work some amazing dashboards are created so this is just one um example of of the charts which are created but uh, the polls online polls which i i was um, i was referring um, i've taken this poll uh, around i think one year back and then i repeat the same just uh, i think month ago so uh, it was taken around it took around uh, 250 plus uh, professionals to have this uh, to participate in this poll and and it's a, it's it, it was taken on linkedin so uh, these are uh, serious professionals who are working so um you will see so i just uh, write a very simple question please describe the process you adopt in your regular financial and business reports so the majority around uh, 58 so around 60% of the professionals said uh, they use pivot table and pivot charts rightly so and uh, a pivot table and pivot charts are amazing they are used uh, uh, by most of the professionals but the thing is which i want to highlight is uh, now the area which is kind of an important one is this one to start with so why only uh, it uh, out of 250 plus why only 13% of the professionals are not using this um, excel and uh, this uh, uh, power query element this uh, element of power tools uh, so i i moved up and uh, taking clue from this one i moved to the next stage uh, where uh, the same um, in the same uh, poll uh, i asked another question so um i run another sequence a subsequent poll uh, how much time you consume in your finance and business reports uh, by using pivot table and pivot charts so assuming 160 hr in a month um around a maximum participants uh, 40% of the participants have uh, given the indication that 10% of their time is used which is 16 hr so two days um but uh, the matter of concern was uh, 60% of the professionals are using more than 2 days um so and and uh, i think uh, 20% of the participants are using more than 6 days uh, so if so that's that's a red flag if in a closing um or or uh, regular closing or regular reporting uh, if you're consuming more than 2 days so that's a red flag you you should consider yourself doing some extra work to do the automation and save your time why to save your time just to move up the ladder otherwise you will not move up the ladder because uh, all professionals have 24 hours uh, all every person on the planet has 24 hours in a day so you cannot buy time uh having the having a clue uh from the second uh, webinar uh, we moved up to the third part so that was interesting uh, uh the reason behind consuming uh, more time on repetitive task and not upgrading yourselves 
Um, uh, this was regarding the BI tool, but uh, you can, in a BI tool, if you are going for Power BI, so Power Query is there in BI tool as well. Um, uh, like uh, the Power tools, which are in Excel, uh, uh, they are in Power BI as well, but in some enhanced versions. So Power Query is there in, in uh, uh, Power BI and Power Pivot is also there in Power BI, but in an enhanced version. So uh, uh, a few of them uh, replied, uh, most of them, I think 90% uh, of the professionals uh, replied uh, that they are unaware. Either they are unaware of the BI tool or, or they are aware, but they are waiting. So this was kind of a same one. So 50% replied that they are unaware of BI tool and uh, around 42% replied that they're just waiting for the BI tools to just happen. Uh, those ten percent, which is they are not BI tool is not required or old fashioned report is good for them. They these are those professionals who are not working in 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 uh, the data, which is huge. So for them, it's okay uh, and it, and it's an understandable one. But for around ninety percent of the professionals, uh, either they are not aware or they are they're just waiting, uh, just something to happen. Um, remember what I, I've said earlier that uh, it is only for those professionals who are going for the reporting uh, uh, jobs or they are in a reporting environment. So they need some skills to buy time that are wrangling. They are doing the analysis, visualization, dashboard design, storytelling, but data wrangling is one of the important thing, uh, which uh, if, if you master those skills, so you can um you can save time you can save some amazing elements of time uh, i often give this example uh the tools and their respective professionals so uh, i took this example of of a chef so if you are working as a chef uh so there are there are quite a number of chefs but i'm just giving you one example uh, of a uh, pastry chef and a pantry chef so if you are working as a pastry chef, uh, you will have your own tools. You will have your own set of knives, uh, which will reduce your time in order to perform your activity. Uh, the same will happen if you are working as a pantry chef. So you will have different set of knives. All of them are knives, simple knives, right? But different set of knives, uh, which will reduce your time and which will be helpful in conducting your task efficiently so it's it's not about using knife it's about using the correct knife so it's important to use best kind of knife uh, to perform your task in less time so time is one of the important things which i want to emphasize uh, we all are using uh, evergreen software of Excel and PowerPoint, they are here to stay and they will be here to stay. Uh, uh, having all the uh, AI buzz around, chat GPT buzz around, they will stay. Um, Copilot is there in uh, Excel, in uh, PowerPoint, in Power BI, so they, they will stay. Definitely they will stay. But the thing which I want to explain uh, is you will have to do your foundation correctly. Um, and for, do, the, uh, for that part, uh, Power Tools in, in Excel is really amazing. So um, Power Query and Pivot Table are there as uh, your guide to save your time. Uh, and if you want to move up the ladder, then BI tools. Uh, Power BI is definitely leading, but Tableau and TXSense is also there. Uh, now, the good thing about uh, Power Tools in Excel is um, Excel is used by all the professionals, regardless of the fact. If you're working in any area, Excel will be used. Uh, if, you use, if you're using Excel, which is sure you're using, and if you learn the Power Query and Pivot Table. So you can also uh, utilize the skills in Power BI. So both the skills uh, which are required from the tools of Power Query and Pivot Table, uh, Power Pivot can be used in 
uh, Power BI as well, apart from Excel. So you can save time and you can do uh, some wonders. Uh, and the same thing, which I explained in the previous slide, saving time is uh, very important. And uh, if you want to move up uh, to a ladder, uh, to acquire rules of uh, analyzer, influencer, and uh, the strategic partner, then you will have to buy some time uh, in order to move forward. So um, till now, we have discussed a few things, just a few things, um, the enhanced roles, uh, skills, traditional reporting, and improved uh, business reports. Now moving forward to the introduction of uh, Power Excel tools, which is Power Query and Power Pivot. So uh, a Power Query and Power Pivot are uh, automatically or are natively there in, um, in Excel. And uh, they are the foundations for your analysis. So if I just quickly go through with the building blocks of business reports. So there are, uh, you will have to uh, do the connection. You will have to take the source. You will have to take the data from the source. It can be any source. Uh, then you will have to make uh, the data ready for analysis. Um, then the connection of table is there. So if anyone who has worked in access before, which is an old tool, so they know how the uh, connection of different tables are done. Moving forward, you will have to do the data analytic work from the raw data, and uh, then you will have to go for visualization. So the power tools, which I am talking about, it covers uh, more than four foundation steps uh, before moving to the visualization part. So first, let's go for the first two steps, which are uh, the basic foundation. Uh, these are covered in Power Query. And uh, it is a backbone of automation. So if you want to do the automation in Excel, um, the best tool to use is Power Query. Yes, you can do automation by using VBA, by using Python, by uh, by using the, the uh, SQL as well, but you will use uh, a SQL with the help of our uh, query. Uh, VBA is definitely it's uh, a different ball game altogether. Uh, and uh, right now, um, the Power Query is taking over the VBA as far as the automation is concerned because uh, this same skill, this same uh, formulas, this same, same tools can also be replicated in Power BI. So that's one of the amazing advantage of um, learning Power Query. So uh, uh, these two steps are done in Power Query, which is mostly uh, known as data wrangling skill. Uh, then moving forward, uh, the next two steps, which is connecting table and doing the data analysis uh, to extract insights from raw data, uh, it is done in Power uh, Pivot. Um, so data modeling and data analysis using DAX functions, it is done in uh, Power Pivot. So uh, these are uh, the two uh, steps which are covered in Power Pivot. So a quick intro of Power Query and Power Pivot. And uh, let's move forward with our practical session. So let's go for the practical session. The link of the files are given in the description. So you can download and uh, you can move along with me. OK. Uh, so let's start our project. Um, this is a simple pen reconciliation template. So I'm just opening the same and I'll just go through with the bank account in books and bank account as per statement is concerned. So let's let me just open the Excel sheet over here. Okay. Uh, we are matching the adjusted cash balance as per bank and as per book. So there are 
kind of a methods where you start from a um, bank and you end up at uh, the books of accounts or you started from book of account and end on bank balance and uh, there is uh, this method as well where you tend to have the adjusted cash balance so i'm using that one you can use either of the same a bank statement so there are two anomalies uh, there is a case where deposits can be in transact and there are some outstanding checks and as far as books of accounts are concerned so there may be deposits which are collected by the bank so we, we are not aware of that one and there are some service charges right uh, as far as our um, bank statement is concerned so it is a csv file which which i assume we received from bank so i'll just uh, quickly walk you through with the bank statement okay bank statement is opened over here yes it is open so it's a simple csv file uh, where it has if i just open it up it has the currency over here as well pkr that there is a running balance credit amount debit amount description and this is uh, in our case we are using a description which is common right so this description is common so you will have to use the description which is kind of a common in all cases okay and uh, let me close this one save it okay and uh, let's move forward with the bank statement so it is we have two months bank statement so it is one simple bank statement for yes okay So bank book of accounts is okay. So it's a simple book of account over here. So same wording is used over here as well, right? So this is an important thing to move forward. And uh, let's start our work for the bank reconciliation. So we'll go in data. This is the magic power query. We will first insert from CSV, we'll insert the bank statement and we will do some simple transformation. And that transformation will be automatically recorded. And once you, uh, once we will update the file, so we will have the same transformation of working for us. So I think, yes, this is the one which we are using. So bank statement, I think, yes, this is one. So we'll start with the January and let's import the file. Let's have some simple transformation and then we'll, uh, it will be enough for us to do the task. Okay, let's click on transform. So the small window has guided us whether we want to just load it in Power uh, in Excel or we want to open Power Query. So I'll, we want to open Power Query. Um, for us, it's uh, the top four or five rows are not needed. So we will go in, we'll do some simple transformation. To remove rows, we will remove the five rows from here and use first row as header. Delete all of them. Uh, I and remove this null so we are we end up with a clean set of table uh and let's do one more thing let's name it as bank only bank okay so we will load it in the sheet and we will just load it as a table okay so a table has been loaded a simple table has been loaded and this is bank so let's load the next one as well which is over here and this is an excel file so we will load the same and we will do some transformation january file this is the file and we will trans form the data
So let's change the name and we uh, definitely don't need to do the transformation of the same. So I've just taken the picture uh, of our bag reconciliation, but we want to do just a picture, simple picture to start with. So we need first opening balance. We will have opening balance over here. Um, we will start with this one. Deposit in transact, outstanding checks for for uh, the books, we need the deposits which are collected directly by the bank and the service charges. So first, deposit in transact. So for deposit in transact, we need, because deposits in uh, transact are already there in the debit side of our books, they should be on the credit side of our bank account and if they are not on the credit side so we need to have them on the credit side right so we will merge the books with the bank so i'm going the merge option um, and i am merging it with bank so the deposits are in the debit side of the book so we will match the debit side with description from with the credit side of the description okay so if so now a new table has been created this table is the original table of books and with this table you can open another table of the bank so you can open the complete columns of the bank uh, i don't want to uh, uh, add all the complete columns of the bank. So this is merge query. So deposit in transit. I'm just naming it as deposit in transit. And uh, the books, we need the debit. So we will delete them, these columns. And we need only the deposits. And now we need to open up the bank account with the respective element. So I need the credit balance. Don't use this one. Click on OK. OK. So we clearly see that uh, on 5th of January, there is a deposit which is appearing on the 10th of January with the same amount. But those deposits which are deposited on the last day are not appearing in the bank account. Okay, it's logical. So this was deposit in transact. Uh, and we load this table and we will move forward. Uh, now let's move to the second one, which is outstanding checks. Outstanding, we'll have to deduct the outstanding checks. And for that, uh the checks uh, so let's understand the logic how the checks are appearing uh so the checks are appearing on the credit side of our books so we have issued the check so it is appearing on the credit side of our book but it will appear on the debit side of the bank account and the check number is also important so let's start with the books and let's merge a new query. Okay, and let's go with the bank over here. So deposit is one to be matched. Credit is second to be matched and check number is third to be matched. Deposit. Now over here, we need to match with the debit side. And the third is the check number. So I, I hope uh, because uh, most of the finance professionals are aware of this one. So I'm just going through with this one, but I am aware that uh, this is kind of a routine thing. So this, this uh, the concept is clear. So you can always uh, work through with this one. So we need the withdrawals, only the withdrawals to be encountered. So we will have withdrawals. 
So these are the withdrawals. And uh, let's see. We have one withdrawal from here, second, third, and this is an empty one. Okay. So we need the credit, this one. We don't need this one because the checks are from here. And let's open it up. And we will open only description, check number, and this is the debit side, I think we need to open. Okay. So from here, we are aware that these are the checks which are withdrawn. They are presented over here. This check is in our books, but not in bank account. Okay, great. Uh, we have changed the name. Okay, so we have created two elements. Now the third one, deposit collected by the bank and the service charges. So now we'll go other way around as far as for uh, we started once we were going with uh, the uh, reconciliation for the bank statement. So we started with the uh, books of accounts. For books of accounts, we will start from the bank. So let's move forward with this one. And uh, collection checks. So we will start with uh, the bank. And we need to merge curious new and we will merge it with the books. And uh, this is the checks which is which are collected by the bank. So they are on the credit side and for the books, they are on the debit side. So that is why we are matching. Description is common, but why this debit and with this credit because of the nature of the transaction. So this is collected by bank. I'm just naming it as collect checks collected by bank. And um, once we reach there, uh, then now it's it's important to understand that these are the the deposits, but these are the deposits which are of different type. For instance, this is a deposit with dash, and it is ABC, which is the client uh, name collected by the bank. These checks are uh, collected by the banks. So let's move to that one, the deposits. So we will go in over here and tax filter begin with so we'll use some feature to begin with and it begins with deposit dash so it begins with deposit dash so there can be in in february there is uh, three or four deposits with begin with uh deposit and dash so I will filter this one off from here. So there is just one element. And yes, for, for the right reason, it is empty. So I will delete this one, running balance, currency, uh, check number, all of these things. I will delete this one and I will open it up. And I will open it up for the posting, description, and debit. That's it. So it is nil altogether. And the last thing, which is service charges. Okay, so service charges, uh, we will start the same. We'll start from the bank and uh, let's go in merge, merge is new query. And we will go with the books. So the service charges should be on the debit side of the bank and it should be on the credit side of our box, right? So we'll merge them accordingly, the debit side of the bank and the credit side of the book. Description, definitely we need the description. Once it is there, then um, we need to sort it according to service charges. So this is the service charges. 
and once it is done then we don't need this one this one this one and this one and let's delete this column and we have this service charge is cater for this one is not cater for so let's delete this one and let's expand the same which is posting date description and credit so we have something over here but not all of the things are over here okay so this is our service charges okay so four things are covered and i think this is all which we need so let's close and load to as a table so it will be added as a table over here so let's just take few minutes it will take few minutes to work with okay so this is our books this is our Uh, deposit DIT deposit in transit and this is outstanding checks so oh see I'm just making it much more simple collection by bank and this is SS service charges so uh, for service charges uh, let's do one more thing this is bank this is books this is dit so we will go over here in table let's turn on the totals so we have the totals with us some this one over here and let's turn on the totals as well in the yes this total as well so we have total some over here and some over here and uh, we can filter it up with blank so only the blank will appear because this is the outstanding checks and we need to deduct the outstanding checks and the service charges as well so let's take this one from here and let's take this total sum and if there is any amount let's take the sum as well it may come in others and let's go from here and let's check the balance and we will use the total over here sum and the sum over here yeah. okay yes so let's go back uh, to where we are and let's start with the balances so uh, we will use some a combination of simple formulas index and uh, the count a formula so index will return the value from the array so it is bank so this is the one which we need and i need the closing balance so i will use count a for a last value that's it so we have our closing balance and index uh, books so this is these are books over here and count a and i need the closing balance so count a will count all the rows so it, these are uh, uh, 16 rows so it will count all the rows and we have the closing balance over here and uh, as far as the uh, transit is concerned so this one minus this one will have the transit and we'll use the minus part for this one over here then the deposits so it will be the 
this one. Uh, so we can use complete formula uh, minus this one, right? And this is minus part over here. So it was a very small uh, statement. Uh, we started with bank balance. So we have deposit and transact outstanding checks. So this is an adjusted cash balance as, as far as bank statement is concerned. And we started with the books of accounts. So we have the deposit which are collected directly by the bank. So it is adjusted service charges, which are not catered for. This is adjusted. And we have the adjusted cash balance. So as far as the trick is concerned, nothing has happened. We have just uh, done the same. Uh, but the important thing is once you are uh, but once you have done the same over here and uh, you want to do the same for the different month so for instance this is one month which is over here and you want to do the different month so you can do it for the different month okay You can do one more cool thing before I can move ahead, which is um, a simple formula uh, because this is, it doesn't denote what uh, we want to show, right? So we can just have one simple formula to have a date. So let's have a simple formula over here, um, text, and we want to show the last day. Uh, text don't date and we can go in either way so let's go with this array formula over here and count a and we want to show the last count all the rows 11 rows and pick up the last figure okay so once you are picking up the last figure i think we need to close the yes close uh, the formula uh, in order to move forward and we have used the text format so how i want to show it so it is m m m d d y y y so i want to show it with this element and uh, let's make it happen over here so this is uh, i've just i want to show this day and this date will be used in our working so i want to say it's a bank balance so let's show it as a bank balance so as on concatenate and percent and this one so closing balance of bank statement, closing bank statement balance balance of bank statement, I think is a good word. Closing balance of bank statement as in, okay. And I can use the same from here, closing balance of books, adds on 35. So now we can hide this one. And uh, we have done all the preparatory work, right? So uh, we have our January reconciliation ready. So we can uh, go back to the power query okay and now just we will uh, have to change one thing only the source so i will go over here in source click on this one so we have the source for january so i will this is bank This is bank statement, right? So I replace it with February. 
and import okay and now our february is is done so it has remembered the same and it has done all the transformation which we have done so far right so now this transformation is automatically done i will go in the in the books and we have the january file so i will change into this bank account february so let's import okay so it will do the trick and uh, let's refresh all and let's load once i have loaded the same now it and i i press the refresh as well so it is loading this one and you see over here okay some of the things have done so let's move forward and let's go and press the refresh all that's one so uh you will see keep an eye over here so once i go over here and i press refresh all now it is refreshing all the this transact and all these things are refreshed okay right so with a click of a button all the queries are refreshed so you have done uh, uh we have just done few tasks a few simple tasks so you have done few simple tasks for one uh bank statement with its respective bank account in your books and once you have done all the preparatory work so you will just press the refresh button and it will be reconcile and the same will happen uh so uh, in the business world uh, you are not dealing with only one bank account you are dealing with different bank accounts so imagine uh if you are working uh this kind of task so uh, it will how much time you will save so this uh, you will find all the preparative files to work on so this was our um our small demo and and uh, uh, by presenting this demo i am really sure that uh, you will think in your mind what kind of transformations you can do and how much time you can save if you are working for reporting and and uh, uh, in in excel all of the persons are reporting in excel so if you are working in excel uh, especially reporting so uh, it's it will have tons of tons of uh, benefit for you okay so once we started our session so it was most about uh, um, the big picture uh, we have covered uh, some element of power query we have not touched power pivot uh, but definitely we will touch power pivot uh, in our complete uh, course which we will be launching in uh, by next month but um i hope you may have some idea how you can benefit from uh, power query and power power pivot is amazing yeah, you can use the x function on that one uh, unfortunately i don't have time for that one but definitely you can use that one a practical session uh, we have done some some simple aspect of automation of um bank reconciliation statement and some key takeaways which is the last one um to start with um i will recommend to uh, follow some amazing uh, youtube channels um like enterprise dna avinash singh so the uh, 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 qr code is over here so you can search on the web or you can just scan the qr code the the channels will be there and there are some amazing uh, videos which are there uh, which are especially for the business and finance professionals as far as books are concerned um you can learn quite a number of things with with books uh mr uh, uh power pivot and power bi so 
if if it is power pivot so it, it can work in excel as well by avina saying uh, supercharge bi uh, is definitely it's it's more about bi but if you are working in power pivot so uh, you can uh, learn some amazing tools of dax formulas uh, which are presented over here by matt ellington um uh, good charts definitely this is good for the visualization part if you want to learn uh, data storytelling skills so dedicated is one of the youtube channel a uh, storytelling with data ha has some amazing things on their channel paul smith is also amazing as far as the storytelling is concerned uh some some books uh i'll recommend so i have uh already recommended the storytelling with data the uh youtube channel uh, uh cole has her books as well she has uh, three books uh, i have two in my library which is as you can see uh, behind me the third one is uh, is ordered so i will have the third book as well i have the data story uh, telling uh, by brent i have that book right now uh, but i've ordered the b data literate so i will have the book of uh, jordan as well so i have gone through with these two books which storytelling with data which is at the extreme uh, left side at the extreme right side the story um, uh, data storytelling effective data storytelling by brent uh, the uh, you can follow both of them on LinkedIn. They have some amazing posts, some learning posts, uh, which which will be beneficial for you. Uh, effective approach for skills. So don't waste your time preparing the reports or slides. I uh, use uh, the um, international business communication standards. Uh, so do search international business communication standards (IBCS). So you will find some amazing uh, templates for the reports. As it's always said, um, uh, to find some signal in the data, learn to reduce the noise by uh, the old famous Stephen Few. Um, I I always receive a complaint that uh, how we can practice, we cannot find some relative data. Uh, we find the data on Kaggle regarding uh, research and anything else, but we cannot find some relative data. So um, Excel, uh, Microsoft has provided uh, some amazing data sets in Excel. Uh, I have given uh, the URL as well. Uh, so you can find some uh, amazing data sets, uh, which uh, covers quite a number of things regarding uh, human resource, customer, IT, procurement, retail sales. So there are uh, quite a number of, uh, which cover quite a number of uh, array of uh, of areas in as well as data systems in concern. If you want to go with a complete database where different departments are there and uh, there's a transaction which is happening. So AdventureWorks sample data set is uh, recommended. You can download it. Uh, uh, so it's a SQL data set. So you, can, you will have to uh, install SQL to download the same and you can export it in Excel. Um, to learn uh, Power Query, which we have uh, witnessed few things regarding Power Query uh, is is working on M language and M language has its own amazing features to do. So M language is all about automation. So if you want to learn M language, uh, check out the resource on Learn Microsoft. Similar with DAX language, uh, if you want to learn more about DAX language, so do check out uh, their resources, the resources of Microsoft. Last but not the least. Um, Power Excel versus Power BI is concerned. So Excel and Power BI are two different softwares, but uh, there are few things which are similar, which I explained in the previous slides as well. Um, Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX are some of the commonalities. So if you learn those features, uh, if you're working in Excel, it doesn't matter. If you learn those features, um, then you are a very good candidate uh, to step up and learn Power BI uh, because visualization is on another level as far as BA Power BI is concerned and it's a BI tool. So the sharing part, the other parts are really amazing. Um, we uh, definitely, we, we, did, we haven't found much time. So we have just uh, taken a few uh, practical example. A one practical example with few minutes to go uh, in the live session, but um, we will be having a complete course on uh, 
Power Excel for business professionals. Uh, it will be for a 12th session. So every session will have will last for around two or two and a half hour. It will be uh, uh, 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Pakistan time. So you can always uh, check your local time. Uh, all the classes will be online. It will start, I think, in a month time, 24th of November. And the online classes will end on 30th uh, January 2024. Uh, if you're interested, you can give us a call, WhatsApp message, or an email. Uh, email is also there, so you can shoot the email as well. You can also fill up an online form uh, where our team will contact you for uh, to have further details. So if you want further details, you are always welcome. Uh, remember, the training which we are conducting and the, the webinar which we have conducted right now, it is all about the automation of the standards and routine reports. So for ad hoc reports, it's definitely not advice, but, but for uh, standard reports, routine reports, uh, it's good. And uh, we will focus, we have focused few things as far as data wrangling is concerned. Uh, analytics, we have not concern, uh, we have not touched the uh, four uh, parts in our live session due to time constraint. So we only touched the data wrangling part. Right. But in our complete course, we will touch the data wrangling part, the uh, analytics visualization part, uh, dashboard design part. You can develop a complete dashboard and that complete dashboard can be updated with a click of one button, which is refresh, which we have done right now. OK, so everything will be updated in a second. OK, this is all about uh, the session which we have planned. If you want to connect with us, you can connect with me, uh, our amazing LinkedIn group, Power BI for Finance, our official group. Uh, you can check out our um, YouTube channel and also connect it with our Facebook uh, page. Okay, so that's it all. And if you have any questions, so you can uh, write your questions in the comments, and uh, me and my team uh, will try to answer your questions uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye from now.